if I watch a freestyle back and I can predict what the rhyme's going to be or what topic I'm going to do, then that means I was conscious and thinking and the freestyle's probably bad. And I think that's, the, the, that's why whoa, a lot of people whoa, whoa. find it hard to freestyle to a really great level because they are, you have to get into flow. TheKillerKellerOfficial.com THTC, the UK's leading ethical streetwear label. Organically grown and ethically built garments from hemp, organic cotton and other sustainable materials. 2019 is their 20th anniversary year. Join me with THTC as a Killer Keller podcast sponsor celebrating music, social activism, hemp and street culture. THTC, eco-fashion redefined since 1999. Talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, good uh, morning wherever you are. We are here, you are there. Killer Keller Podcast, subscribe. We shout to Graffiti Kings in the place. And uh, yeah, an absolute pleasure. Again, the Los Angeles area of Wilshire and La- where it? Wilshire, La Brea. Some... Roughly, I think oh. we call it La Brea or Miracle Mile, if you want the neighbourhood. Ah, uh, the Miracle Mile, see? see? Get a bat round here. Um, with a, a friend, a new friend of mine. Goes by, in fact, let me just break it down before we go any further. MC, freestyler, comedian, Brit abroad over here, currently killing it internationally. And if you're in England, the likelihood is you, you probably won't know too much about this character, but he's all over the shop. He's all over the place. His name's Chris Turner. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. That was such a nice introduction. Did you like that? Yeah, it felt very American stand-up show, because all the stand-up shows over here, they're like, you've seen this guy on Letterman, on Leno, on <laughs> Conan, please... And I'm always sat there as an audience member going, no, I haven't. Don't <laughs> tell me who they are. Just be like, this next comedian is very funny. Please welcome this. Um, I get into arguments with comedians all the time over here. They're like, this is my intro. I'm like, I'm just going to say that you're really funny. They're like, no, let them know I'm on this. I'm like, fine. Yeah, it's kind of annoying, isn't it, in a way that you need that validation. To make the crowd trust you. It's like, no, you yeah. couldn't trust us because we're on stage. I just get them to say, from the UK, because then they go, oh, you must be funny, he can afford tickets. <laughs> yeah, totally. He wouldn't be here if he wasn't funny. Exactly. Kind of... That's that's how I feel. That's why I don't do comedy in the UK anymore, because it doesn't have that impact. And also, <laughs> there's something really, like, organic about the culture of America, like, totally being into... Like, there's comedy stores in a lot of places. There's Chinese... Back of Chinese restaurants, there's a comedy store. Back of a comic store, there's a comedy store. Mm-hmm. It, it's so embraced, comedy. They've there. had it here for so long. Yeah. I always think... I mean, someone told me that the US comedy scene is at least 10 years ahead of the UK's. And that's not to do the UK comedy scene down, because there are amazing comedians over mm-hmm. there, but... It definitely feels like comedy is a part of the American culture. Like yes. everyone knows about the two drink minimum. Everyone knows mm. that you're going to go out and you're going to, you know, how comedy shows work over here. Whereas in the UK, people are like, oh, it's stag night. Should we go for a comedy show? Yes. Rather than there's a culture here of, oh, we go and see some comedy because it's kind of integral to their. I mean, this, that's maybe a very coastal opinion like I think LA I is a comedy yeah. town New York's a comedy town yeah. maybe in the kind of flyover states it's less so yes yeah, but even then too. the fact that all these states and cities can support so many comedy clubs it's amazing fewer than they used to but still many is great yeah it's, I mean, it's amazing I don't actually know many like comedy spots in London or England but not one there's, there's plenty of great clubs but just fewer fewer there's a smaller smaller place smaller thing yeah um, and to cut through the noise here I mean there's a lot of comedians, and it's just it, I find it incredibly interesting the angle that you you you've kind of crept on the scene with, and uh, yeah, it's a USP. I mean, it's it's undeniable. You've you've landed in the right country for it. I have. <laughs> so I for people we're kind of burying the lead here for yeah. people who are not familiar. I yes. do freestyle rap in my comedy shows, and when I do it anywhere outside America, people are like, "Wow, that's really good." Mm. When I do it in America, people get it more. So I, I play New York a lot, and I'll play the Comedy Cellar there, which is like the place you want to play. And a lot of the MCs there are older guys who've been around the New York scene for a long time and, that, and crossed over with like the New York hip-hop scene. And so I'll do shows, and then they'll come up to me and go, that was good. And I'm like, thank you. They go, no, you don't understand. My friends are these rappers, and that was good. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. They're like, no, no, seriously. 
it's good. I'm yeah. like, oh, that's cool. And it feels like an audience over here get it more than a British audience do. Yeah. Because an American audience know what freestyling is because they grew up like listening to hip hop and freestyling themselves. Whereas yeah. in the UK, no one's freestyling. Like, not a comedy audience. Whereas it, yeah. people are like, oh, I tried to do that when I was at school. I, I always sucked. And yeah. So they get it more. And therefore, the reaction is huge compared to being yeah, in the yeah. UK. I agree with you in part. I think you, you're dealing in the, 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 the source. This is where mm-hmm. it's come from. And when you marry that with the comedy, and in, it's still a live performance-based thing. It's a bit like beatboxing. I always, mar- I always marry the, the two, the, the co- a comedian with a beatbox, because you are actually going out on stage on your ones, on your own, doing it. Um, so when you talk about these other comedians that are like, yo, yo, but you don't understand, I know these other people, and the, you know, the, they, they you know, haven't got a f- flame on you. Like, the, by comparison, like, you're great. It's because it co- they kind of come from the same cycle of performance and isn't it it's a very similar sport oh definitely yeah Uh, yeah um it's i'd say that it's all very combative like it's you and mike versus the audience um sorry combative when you're in america it's very hard to remember which syllables get stressed Mm. like i'll say something on stage i'll be like an advertisement and people like yeah what i'm like oh sorry an advertisement Oh, I, it was so hard for you to figure out what I meant. Like, ce- celebratory. <laughs> and they're like, no, celebratory. I'm like, yeah. shut up. You know what the word is. Mm-hmm. Why are we quibbling over this? Potato, potato, isn't it? Exactly. It is. But then I find myself going home, because um, I am in the UK occasionally, and I'll say words that I realise, oh, no, I've started saying trash. Yeah. Or, you know, garage. And no one wants to hear you refer to garage music. It's, n- it's nylon, isn't it? It's a nylon accent. I would imagine you going over to the UK and being like... Oh, like I sound American in England, but you're over here and you sound English to the American. I, I did have a friend say, "Oh, you're losing your English accent," and I was like, "How dare you? How dare you?" If, <laughs> if I lost that, my whole the thing is like, I'm not funny. I'm just foreign. Mm-hmm. So over here, I walk on stage. I'm like, I'm like, hello, and people go, "Oh my god, this guy's hilarious." Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're um, like a huge jump. Yeah, you the... need the accent. Yeah. So if it goes any worse, I'm gonna have to start walking on stage, being like, "Good evening, mm-hmm. my fellow citizens. It's a pleasure to be like really." English it up. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Almost go the complete wide of out of character kind of over. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, with freestyle, I'm just going back to the freestyle thing, I, mm. I do feel the angle you come from, there's plenty of competent um, freestyle MCs oh, in the UK. Definitely. But um, it, they, there is a non compliance with them that, that there has to be a British accent, it has to be uh, regional, there has to be dialect, there has to be, there's rules to the freestyle thing. And often I'm like, where do these rules come from? Like, when I hear you freestyle, there's clearly an American accent going on. But I understand why. Oh, I think, I think it depends on the video. I change the accent to the beat. And I kind so, of like that factor. Especially earlier videos, there are more American accents. But then since I've started doing stuff over here, I definitely lean harder into a British accent. Do you? Because yeah. I would have thought that it was more catered towards them appreciating the... the the flow and how you're literally like I mean I guess that's true I, one thing I always find weird is people if people go oh why have you got an American accent when you sing or rap and you're like oh like everyone does like yeah. when you sing your accent rounds out in a way that sounds more American 100%. anyway like 100%. Adele speaks like yeah. a you know proper British person but then when she sings you're like you couldn't tell where she's yeah, from yeah exactly I agree your I voice agree. changes so much and it's always weird and I'm like a lot of the time I'll choose an accent that fits the song and plus, in my freestyles now, I've been working more on voices. So I was editing one, like a video to put up. And I was like, oh, I use three different voices in this. There's like the voice of me rapping it. But then there's a bit where I'm playing someone's dog who's been left at home and I'm rapping like a dog. And then another one where I'm rapping like a Martian because someone wanted to rap about Martians. And it's, it's really fun. That's to, crazy. Oh, and I rap as the woman who owns the dog. So I was like, oh my God. That's and so sick. It, it's really fun. And you see the audience respond to that. And like quite often I'll, yeah, if someone has a heavy accent, if someone was like, baked potatoes, <laughs> I'd do the baked potato section of the rap in a Scottish accent because it's funnier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It's curious as well, because like if you've, yeah, it's not, it's not a pick on a particular accent for the, for the comedy value, but it's when you actually tra- trade places with the character you're talking about and keeping in time with the relevance of the, the word you, or phrase you've been given and 
told to rap about. That's a lot of patting head and rubbing stomachs going mm-hmm. on there. That's a lot of thinking in different ways, isn't it? That's yeah. Well, I'm always trying to maximise the work I'm doing on stage without making it work. So, I'm when I'm freestyling, I'm never thinking about it, right? Mm. So, I'll... I was watching back the video from last night today, I was editing it, and I was laughing a lot because I didn't, I was like, oh, I didn't, I didn't think he was going to say that because I'm not thinking of me as me, I'm thinking of watching this performer because I don't remember what I said because That's if cool. it's subconscious and not prepared or not mm. thought, how could you know what you were going to say? And if I watch a freestyle back and I can predict what the rhyme's going to be or what topic I'm going to do, then that means I was conscious and thinking and the freestyle's probably bad. And I think that's the, the that's why whoa, a lot of people whoa, whoa. find it hard to freestyle to a really great level because they are you have to get into flow and that's about being comfortable. So for me a, a big secret is if I've performed at a venue hundreds of times, I'm super comfortable. So I can I'm, I can walk on stage and be like, I'm gonna nail this. Like mm. I know the crowd there like me. I had shows in Edinburgh where I used to bring the same rug for every show to put on stage. So whenever my feet were on it, I felt comfortable because of the rug, like a comfort blanket, right? And that means you're able to stop the adrenaline that makes you nervous and use the adrenaline to speed up your brain, which slows down time, which gives you more space to work in. So I therefore have more space to kind of challenge myself with. So rather than just, I've got to make all these words rhyme, I'm like, I've got to make them rhyme, I've got to tell a story, I've got to be intellectual, I've got to be funny, I've got to throw voices in, I've got to put gestures in, and I've got to make punchlines. Wow, well, yeah. But if you can do that without thinking, that's when... That's a level of zen where stuff. you just really... Yeah, it is kind of zen, without being overly spiritual, because I'm not a person who's like, oh, I'm on a higher plane. Mm. I don't think I, I just mm. think I'm super comfortable on stage. Yeah. If that makes sense. That, People are always like, are you autistic? I'm like, no, I just think I, I access a fugue state which a lot of people with Asperger's seem to operate within. That's amazing. Thank you. My cat is licking up crumbs on the floor. Uh, the, on the, a plate on the floor. I don't leave crumbs moving on the floor. Hoover. Yeah. Moving Hoover. <laughs> Meowving Hoover. Um, Awful joke. That's... <laughs> See? See? You're going to come in and decide after me. Um, I always say comedians, most of us are only funny on stage. People are always like, oh, you're a comedian? You weren't that funny. I'm like, yeah, because I wasn't being paid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a job. Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, beatboxing is quite the same. Uh, the, the, the amplification of beatboxing is so much more better, in my humble opinion, than it is doing it acoustically. And when someone says, oh, yeah, go on beatboxing, it's like, I kind of don't want to. It's just mm-hmm. not going to be the elevated, like, technical, industrious sound you expect. Well, exactly. Beatboxing yeah. is not just about this. It's about yeah. this and the control. And yeah. I, I was watching Joker on a plane... And then my brother-in-law, who was staying here, was like, oh, this, that soundtrack, like, that's going to win the Oscar. It's so cool. And I was like, really? I didn't notice much. He was like, what were you listening on? I was like, little airplane headphones. Because I have my Bluetooth headphones, but they don't plug in. Like, that's that's right, yeah. the most annoying thing with AirPods. You can't wire them. Like, they should have an adapter for that. Yeah. So I had to listen yeah. on the stupid little over and was like, of course you're going to miss all, like, the detail. Like, this. All the good bits, yeah. And I was like, oh, so now I have to watch Joker again, which is annoying because I didn't really think it was that great. Just to listen to the sound. I'll just listen to the sound. Yeah, I'm... I'm- I must admit, I'm on the fence with a lot of movies. I don't watch enough of them. And it's only when I'm on planes that I actually, you know, you get a chance. Which is a great place to watch movies, because yeah. you always forget the movie, I think. Yeah, yeah. And then, so if it's good, you watch it again. If yeah. it was bad, you're like, oh, yeah, I never... That's true. I lost the two hours of my life, but I was losing them anyway, because I was on a plane. Exactly. Exactly. There's something very sweet about that. Oh, I can't use my phone, can't do anything. Batteries run out on my laptop, because my laptop's shit. And I'm just going <laughs> to chill here and... Yeah, you must do a lot of travelling. There must be a lot of travelling under your There way. is. Um, but it's weird, actually. It's weird to think of that. Because I had a joke in my show. I was doing a show in Australia. Right. And I had a joke about... I, I talked about, like, you know, the environment. Mm. And then I was like, I'm aware of the kind of hypocrisy of me lecturing you on the environment whilst having flown halfway around the world to mm. do this show. However, what's the alternative? A hundred of you fly to LA to see me? That makes no sense. Right? Yeah, okay. But... It is weird to think about how, as, like, flight shaming increases, that whole kind of Nordic concept of people aren't going on their holidays on planes or posting about it because people are kind of jumping on and being like, hey, you seem to go on a lot of holidays on planes. Yeah. Um, It's weird to think how that's going to affect touring artists. And I know that, not to to bring up Coldplay, not sure how often Coldplay get brought up on this podcast, (laughs) but they're like, we're not touring anymore until we can figure out how to make it carbon neutral and not because like we are one of the biggest bands in the world, but also that gives us a responsibility. 
And if you think oh, about I didn't it, know that. This is news. I don't no, know. This is, it's a big deal. And I think it's really cool. And obviously, they're in a position where they don't need to tour anymore. Mm. And ideally, they would never tour anymore. Stop spreading your disease. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Battle rap me, Chris yeah. Martin. <laughs> <laughs> thing is, I'm sure he's a lovely, lovely person, um, and well done on getting their success. Yes, but that being said, uh, it it is interesting how touring will develop. Like now, we have you know Whitney Houston holograms performing. Are we going to yeah. do an MF Doom and send out? You know, do I want to put a mask on a local person and send them to do my show instead of me? Now it wouldn't work because I'd be like, okay, I have to. I can't franchise what yeah. I do because I have to audition so many good freestylers. Like, cool. If I suggested Afghani irrigation ditches, what are you going to wrap up? What's I don't understand any of those words. Oh, then you can't be. Well, you can't be, you can't be me. Yeah. You can't be me. Um, but I do. I do kind of feel weird about the whole amount of flying. Um, it's hard, especially in America, because yeah. there's no. There used to be trains. There used to be trains all across the country. No, there isn't. Anything and now, there now there isn't. Like I was in Chicago going to New York. I was like, oh, I have a day in between the shows. Maybe I could take a train. Now, there is a train. It takes 24 hours. I was like, okay, that would be a cool way to see it. Like, I, I wonder how much the tickets are. Yeah. The ticket to sit on the train, not with a bed, because they have beds. Mm. The ticket to sit on the train was more than a plane ticket. And you're like, well, okay, the convenience and this money saving. But 24 hours in a seat on a train? Oh, mm. I wonder how much a sleeping cabin is. Yeah. It was $1,000. What? You're like, well, of course I'm not going to do that. Can't afford $1,000. To fly to a gig for a hundred dollars or whatever, like no, that just begs belief. You got planes, you got hotels, both of which are way more convenient than going on a, a, a train. Never would be. That's really sad. Yeah, I was on uh, the United pl- flight over, and um, they got budget. There's, I would argue that everyone was just on a budget. Like there was no one up the front. Mm-hmm. Of this United Air. Which is uh, weird because so many people in America have frequent flyer miles uh, and they always get like bumped up if they have them. So it must mean that like no one on that flight was yeah. like a frequent flyer. Yeah, none of them. So everyone's at the back of the plane and there was like a whole half the plane with empty seats. And I was like, man, this is so bad for the, you know, for the planet. These planes flying out like that. And then they get these token that will help the, help the uh, young, help the homeless, help the, you know, the little bags that you donate, mm-hmm. coins that you don't want. And I'm just like, this is just token bullshit. Because if you were to just sort your planes out and had everybody flying back and forth within a, sh- a, 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 a smaller number of flights per day, utilise all this space, that's really making a big difference. Do you know what I mean? It's just money, isn't it? Yeah, it's hard. It's there's so many difficult things to try and like talk about and balance and without being hypocritical and yeah. all these things. It, yeah, it's the thing that makes me uncomfortable all the time. Yeah. Um, because, uh, yeah, and, uh, and like you say, on balance, it's a high class problem because we're the ones doing the travelling. Do you know what I mean? It's like Chris Martin probably does have a good point, you know what I mean? Mm. But, but in, a, in an age where uh, prices, it's expensive to live in LA, it's expensive to live in London, and there's not often the work that the work load that can allow you to have a, any sort of career in in a profession that you start off doing and you're just constantly an apprentice mm-hmm. you know you're doing an apprenticeship this this whole thing and you've got to find the work you can't stay in the same country can you no i mean it's also fun like one of the reasons i love doing comedy is that you get to tour the world mm-hmm. right that's mm-hmm. so cool but then also so this is the kind of weird thing inside i'm like but I am the type of person that should be traveling. Like, like if you are talented, you should be sharing that with people. You mm. should be giving. People are always like, when you come. Someone today was like, hey, when are you coming to Tonga? I was like, I don't know if I'll ever come to Tonga. Yeah. I don't know if there are enough fans of mine in Tonga. Yeah, I was yeah. like, maybe you start sharing my videos and we'll sell 100 tickets. And then I'll, if you can sell 100 tickets in Tonga, I'll come to Tonga. Tonga. Anywhere wow. in the world, if you sell 100 tickets to my show, I will come to you. But I'll second that as well. Yeah, <laughs> I like some. I was in the UK. I had some free days. I put a post on my YouTube. I was like, "Hey, first three people to comment from a place, I'll come there and do a show." So I ended up going to Hamburg to do a show. That's amazing. And it was great. We had sixty people in Hamburg with a week's notice. I was like, "That's insane!" I got to. I fucking love that. I got to go to Hamburg. This is why the internet is the best thing in the world. That's why I got to go to Hamburg. I got to do tourism. I was there for three days, which is too long. Hamburg is a one and a half day city max. Sorry, <laughs> Hamburg. Please have me back. <laughs> <laughs> Hold tight, Dennis, for that one. <laughs> but 
Yeah, I, I feel like artists, we should travel yeah. and we should tour because people want to see us and we bring joy and entertainment to people. The Then there's all the holidays that I took with my family as a child where every summer we'd go to an all-inclusive resort in Menorca. Mm, mm, mm. You're like, yeah, we probably didn't need to do that. We could have gone to Blackpool. Mm. I would have had equally a nice time. There were fewer massive yeah. centipedes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, as a kid, you just kind of go with the flow, don't you, those sorts yeah. of things. Um, I don't know about Blackpool though. <laughs> hey, uh, love you, Blackpool. Yeah, actually, actually, that that's a good uh, area for comedy and theatre and. The Blackpool Winter Gardens is a great place. That's the spot. Yeah. Great, yeah, yeah. I've been up there too many times, but I do, <laughs> I do love it. Um, so, it, let's stick with the fa- family and growing up. Where are you originally from? I'm from Manchester. From Manchester. Yeah, from Sale in Manchester. I don't sound like I'm from Manchester, and I don't know why. My parent, my mum's from Yorkshire. My dad's from Birmingham. And they both didn't have accents. I know everyone's like, oh, I don't have an accent. But I, I vaguely sound northern when I say certain words. Yeah, I wouldn't have said Man- Manchester. Manchester, you know, if you have your own stereotypes there. But a, a lot of people, I know a lot of northerners that don't have accents. My girlfriend, for instance, she's from Blackpool. That's why I've been up there a lot. And uh, yeah, she doesn't have a really an accent. Um, so you were... You know, in bands? Were you in bands? Or I was. You? I played guitar, yeah. and I kind of dabbled in weird, very weird, like avant-garde kind of. Yeah, my favorite music is like <laughs> doom and drone and really down-tuned stuff yeah, where yeah. you're manipulating feedback. Yeah. And so I would always like find drummers, and then we'd we'd flip it so that I would be the rhythm and they would be the lead. Which is kind of weird in a mm. combo, right? But I really liked it. But I was very bad. Yeah. Like I just had a loud amplifier, and I like, and no one was doing that. Like I had a band where we would support all the American bands in our genre that would come over because no one would play that music. So yeah. we were the only local band that were weird enough. But then as soon That's as awesome. I as soon as I went to university, I started doing comedy, and I was like, oh, I'm way better at comedy than yeah. I am at guitar. Why am I bothering with that? <laughs> Plus, comedy somehow seemed to be as like attractive to people as guitar was like mm. playing guitar oh that's cool he's, he's hot he plays the guitar doing comedy oh this guy's funny he can make me laugh that's hot and it's that's true that's man. what i cared about it's amazing when you've got like that uh uh secret power the signature mm. move the thing mm. that differentiate you especially growing up as a kid something that differentiates you from the pack uh you become that you become that thing in their mind don't you um like being in a band is one thing but when you are when you're a comedian. I, mean, I guess um, uh, my next door neighbour, his kid's an Irish. He does Irish dancing. He's like the most ghetto kid. He hangs out with his mates and he's like rude. But then he he nails the Irish dance. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the most random shit ever. Right? That's um, great. But yeah, it's a USP, man. It's like, I, I love that. I love it when things are on the edge like that. Um, well, also that combination, like... A river dancing road man is super funny, <laughs> and like imagine that just pulling that out. People, people, yeah. people wouldn't be like, "Oh, that's nerdy." They'd be like, "Oh, that's actually really cool." Yeah, exactly. All of a sudden, you give it its va- validation almost. Yeah, and that becomes you as yeah as a kid, which is always interesting. Did you ever see yourself as? Because this is you know I'm familiar with Doom and I like a lot of metal, um, but it's. I'm trying to work out when, how that is adaptable and putting the rap into comedy. When did you get into to the rap? 12 years old. So that was, that was because when I was at primary school, I had a friend who, there's two people who are responsible for this. There was a guy called David McLuhan who, he gave me Grand Theft Auto on PlayStation mm-hmm. when I was like 10, mm-hmm. so I wasn't allowed it. Um, and... Uh, also a Limp biscuit, right? Nice, so yeah. new Metal. And new Metal really was like a way for, I think, a lot of, especially white kids, to first be introduced to kind of rap, yeah, right? Yeah. Rap style delivery. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is cool. Um, and obviously it's not good music. But I was like, oh, I like this. And that kind of opened, because I, I yeah. liked rock, because my dad brought me up with like jazz and blues, because yeah. he he's like a huge music fan. And then when I went to university, not when I went to secondary school, I was like 11, there was a guy called Gulid who was this like 
crazy kind of entrepreneurial Somalian kid who would burn any CD you wanted. Mm. So he knew that all like the kind of metalhead kids, like me and my friends, we liked grunge. He's like, hey, I'll get you all these Nirvana live albums that he'd get off LimeWire or Kazaa. He'd download them. And the CDs he had were 74 minute CDs and he'd charge us, I think a pound for each one. Okay. It was very cheap. Right, okay. Um, but it's like, CDs were 10 pounds. So you're like, why would I buy the real CD? I'll get 10 for yeah, 10 pounds. Yeah, yeah. And they were 74 minutes. And like a Nirvana album, it's 45 minutes long. Well, let's not have some water. Uh, the Nirvana album was like seven, you know, 50 minutes long, 45 minutes long. There was space on the CD and he's like, he would fill them up with what he liked, which was nice. rap music. So I was starting to listen to, uh, David also gave me the Marshall Mathers LP, okay. Eminem, which I talk about on stage being the first rap album right. that I ever loved. But Galid would be putting on like, um, like Wu-Tang and Jay-Z and all this stuff. And I'd be like, oh, this is cool. And then he would also put on Chris Rock tracks and I'd be like, who's this? He's like, oh, it's Chris Rock. He's the best comedian. Oh, and there's so, no sex in the champagne room. That, yeah, that so like all, all, all of, well, j- just like the, the tracks from his comedy albums. Yeah. So like, I was listening to these being like, wow, what is this? So I discovered, because again, I listened to comedy, but comedy my dad gave me, which was yeah. like satirical musical comedy from the 70s. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like Monty Python, which again, I love, yeah, yeah. but not stand up. Mm. So Galid introduced me to rap and stand up and that kind of then fed through my teenage years where I would listen to rap but I didn't have any friends to talk about it with so that's why I started freestyling because wow, yeah, from the yeah. age of 12 I would make up my own raps in my room because I speak about this in like, everything I do there's so many videos of me explaining this so I'll keep it brief <laughs> I used to think that all rap was freestyle because no one was there to correct me that's amazing. So I was like, how That's can amazing. Eminem make up all these lyrics? The interior rhymes are amazing. And also I was like a huge nerd. So I loved poetry. So I was like, these losers write all this. This guy makes it all up. You listen to all these things being like, like you listen to Wu-Tang being like, what? Well, look at all these uh, words they're using. And they're just pulling them out of their heads. These guys are geniuses. So I was like, oh, rap's the most, the most intelligent music. And I was like, yeah, shut up, whatever. It's just noise, doesn't make sense. So I would make up my own raps. And then when I eventually learned it was written, by then I was like, oh, because I had no limit in my head as to how good freestyle could be. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I got quite good at it when I was like a teenager. Yeah. And then when I was 21 doing stand-up, I did, was at a show. I did kids' comedy shows. Um, and I made up a song for some kids. And there was a critic there. She's like, you should rap in your adult shows. I was like, no, nah, it seems gimmicky. Yeah. It seems like it shouldn't go together. She's like, no, you'll take roofs off. And then I started rapping um, in my stand-up shows as a kind of that's, closer. That's Oh, as a closer? Yeah, so I'd like, you know, do my jokes and then I'd be like, oh, by the way, I also rap. People would be like, what? And then I'd go, yeah, what do you want to rap about? People would say something and I'd do a rap about it. And I'd go, wow, that was great. No. Just changed the whole dynamic of yeah. the show. That's incredible that you thought that every rapper on a record was freestyling. Mm-hmm. That absolutely blows my mind. It's like, because now when I think about it, me getting into rap in a very similar way as you had, I got into it through Anthrax and Public Enemy. Mm-hmm. Because I was into the metal, and then when I heard Public Enemy do something with that, on that heaviness, changed the whole thing. And I can't lie, when I first got into rap, I think I figured that everyone was freestyling. Well, especially all that early rap, you can you can definitely see how that's more likely to be made up, and yeah. probably came out of jamming lyrics anyway. When you think that's what Wu Tang are doing, or Eminem, or someone who is like lyrically brilliant. Yeah. Um, I also have to clarify it. People, all my like comedy fans, are like, oh man, you love Eminem. What do you think about the new album? I'm like, oh, I I like old Eminem. Like, yeah. I liked Eminem when he was transgressive and rude, and I was a teenager and wanted that. Yeah, yeah. Now I hear stuff that he does, and I'm like, oh, um, yeah, that's really cool that you said all these offensive things. <laughs> hey, fun. Yeah, yeah. You're a grown man. We're all grown men. Let's move past this. Do you think there is something uh, age appropriate appropriation with 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 rap? Um, well, I think that's just with music in general. You think so? In the same way that, like, it, you know, now I listen to... What I don't want to be is, like, all, you know, my dad who'd go, oh, that's just noise. Mm. Now, he was actually very open to a lot of bands I would play him, but, I, you know, if I listen to, like... I'm trying to think of an example. The thing is, I kind of do see the value in a lot of the newer artists. I mean, it's not that there's a new artist, but, like, kind of... Like yeah. Lil Pump, all that kind of SoundCloud rap from two or three years ago, 
so many people are like, oh, what is this? This is I shit. You or you watch the XXL freshman ciphers and people go, these guys have no talent. I'm like, it's not, you're judging it by the standards of what you wanted, which yeah. was lyricism. And really, no one cares about that. A lot of people don't. Like now, it's aesthetics. Yes, understood. And if you judge it on that level, it's great. Yeah, couldn't agree more. But, like, you know, I'm not listening to Blueface going, wow, this guy really speaks to me. But I, I'm not listening to it going, this guy can't even rap. Like, yeah, he can't rap. But you know what? He can. He can make a massive hit. Yeah. yeah. And that's really difficult. And I think that's to be appreciated and thought was cool. So while music speaks to different age groups yeah because it should because it's created by people of that age yeah so that's why I find it weird that Eminem is trying to be the Eminem he was 20 years ago I um, I have to say that when I'm thinking about that genre of rap I really want that time capsuled and I want it to be how it, 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 what it says on the tin you know what I mean like Okay, he's, he doesn't have to be so crude and as he was, but the the competing with younger audience, um, younger artists, I don't think it serves anyone. Do you know what I mean? There's something really cool. I mean, this, rock bands. Rock bands are a great example. They'll they'll be them till they die, yeah. and they'll come round in trend again mm-hmm. because they're cool all of a yeah, sudden. Yeah, the Rolling Stones aren't going to reinvent themselves. They're yeah. the sound that they've always been. One thing I kind of want to add is like, this is me assuming that Eminem... This sounds like I'm saying that Eminem is making music that he doesn't actually want to make. He's making music that he thinks he has to make. I don't know if that's necessarily the case. I'm sure he's like, no, this is the music right. I want to make. But it just it annoys me when people are like... This is a vendetta I have. Because people like, people who like my comedy go, oh, yeah, you must love Eminem. And I'm, I'm like... I'm like, nah, I don't think the new album's good. And they're like, have you not heard this song? He's, he raps so fast. I'm like, that doesn't mean it's good. Yeah. There's this weird thing where technical ability is, especially like vocal speed, mm. is seen as a marker of a great rapper. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I would rather be made to feel something with 10 words than if you fit 40 words into the same time. Yeah. And it's, it's not, I don't think it's hard to write a whole verse of, multi-syllable words that rhyme because everyone can get on rhyme zone now mm. and can just be like oh look at all these words they all rhyme let's try and nonsensically string them together yeah yeah and you're like you're like no go go and like if you want someone who does that MF Doom is the best like he doesn't yeah. rap fast he can make everything rhyme yeah, yeah, I'm sure yeah. he could rap fast if he wanted to yeah, yeah, but yeah. that would lessen and deaden the impact I oh this is my own personal thing yeah, yeah, yeah. and no, no one agrees with everyone like, <laughs> shut up everyone's great good I'm, I'm glad everyone likes the music yeah. they like yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's a matter of opinion, isn't it? And like, also, like you say, when the time you jumped on the m M&M ride was, he was, at, it's, you know, ferocious. Yeah. And the most influential rapper in my life in the sense that he started me rapping. Yeah. Nothing because... compares to, uh, uh, you know, Lose Yourself. Mm. You know, you could listen to that before you go on it on stage. Oh, yeah. You're, you're, you're out. Yeah. You're, you're vibed up. You're ready. And that's, that's how I remember Eminem. I, I think that's how everyone will remember Eminem. No matter what Eminem does, he's yeah. In my head, Eminem is when he wore the like the blue dungarees yeah, right. and the mask. And the, yeah, like that's to me who Eminem was. And when you're a teenager and you see that, he's like what punk was to my dad, mm. or you know what like Billie Eilish is to you know teenagers now. Yeah, this person that are I mean, Billie Eilish isn't a great example because I think parents can understand why people like her. Yeah, but. Which my is mom. always, the, you know, the ingredient for, for you know, we don't, we don't, we don't fucking ugly, ferocious, <laughs> scare your parents type Yeah, exactly. Thing. So, like, my my mum would be like, who is this? He mm. is awful. And I'm like, you don't understand. Yeah, yeah. You want to feel like you're not understood as a teenager. And so when someone makes your parents not understand you, yeah, yeah. you know, not yeah. to bring up parents just don't understand, which yeah. is the best rap song of all time. <laughs> <laughs> for real. I mean, you look, again... You, Right, you, you again. You are uh, quoting different rap acts. You're going down <laughs> these cul-de-sacs in conversations and and uh, topics that are inclusive with all these different uh, generations of MCs. You know your shit, and what's really I don't think quoting Will Smith counts as no oh, your shit. <laughs> Will Smith, man. Will Smith. Oh, gee. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a story about Will Smith. It was him and Jazzy Jeff and. The beatboxer, I think it's Ready Rock. They got MTV Raps commissioned 
on MTV. Ah, that's very cool. That's that's how fucking legit Will Smith is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If it wasn't for him, uh, because Run DMC were meant to do it, but they cancelled. So at last minute, Will Smith said he'd do it, and because they had the beatbox, because they had, and because they're playful characters, mm, yeah, they they commissioned it immediately. How amazing that's is great. that? That is great. But anyway, back to what I was saying, I feel like uh, you're um, slightly understated in the scene. And it actually surprises me. I mean, maybe it's just me and my complete fucking ignorance. But when I was introduced to you, only recently, I was like, fuck. Well, why don't a comedian freestyle? Why has that... that that's so... Ex- it could be so exploited in so many different ways. You know, from URL rap battles to, you know, Louis C.K.'s level of comedic quality. It's such a it's awesome concept. I'm just putting it out there. And I just, find it, I just find it absolutely bizarre and baffling how, I mean, I haven't heard of you. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I don't think anyone has. It's incredible. Um... Yeah, I don't know what to say. <laughs> it's a compliment. Please tell us a compliment. No, no, as in, as in, like, it's very hard to explain things. I've been doing this for 10 years, and I think now I've just got good. Um, really of, good. Uh, yeah, I think I think so, and that's it takes a while to do that. I think the show I'm doing at the moment is the first show that I've really married the two together properly. Like, my show I'm touring at the moment, I just taught it to... It's been in New York, I just taught it to Australia. That's called Rap God, hmm. which, oh my God, it's so funny how pissed off people get about that. They're like, dude, you're good, but Eminem is the rap god. And I'm like, I'm a polytheist. There are multiple gods. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I'm not like, it's a comedy show. Yeah. Obviously, I'm not saying I'm the rap god. I'm yeah, going to yeah. call my next show White Eminem, just to piss him off. That's right, yeah, and yeah. Just to follow in line with what people's, you know, expectations. But this is about. the first show that I've done that is a synthesis of rap and comedy. Because... I was like, oh, I, w- I want to get good at comedy. So I've done like seven one-man shows that are comedy shows, and within it I would throw in a couple of raps because mm. that's the thing that sets me apart. But this show is like, it's got written raps, it's got freestyle raps, it's got slam poetry, it's got stand-up, and everyone who sees it is like, this is crazy. And I'm like, oh, cool, this is a show that like, no one else is doing this kind of show. Wow. There are people who do all freestyle shows or all rap shows. I'm trying to bring it all together in a really fun way, and I'm really excited by it. And That's incredible. It's it's cool, but I think maybe that's a thing that might help people know who I am. I but think it will. I, I think a big part is that you never see freestyle on TV. No. Because I think commissioners are scared of improv in general. And also, I, I do think there's not that many people who can make it accessible to a wider audience. Like, if you love hip-hop, then you can appreciate a good freestyle. Mm-hmm. But to appeal to, like, a general public who don't understand freestyling, they like I said, don't necessarily understand how hard it is. Mm. So it has to be good. It has to be good regardless of the fact it's freestyled. Yeah. And this is a big thing for me on stage. When I started doing it, I never want the audience to be... I mean, obviously, people are surprised because I walk on, I go, I'm going to freestyle, and they go, but you're a middle-class white guy. That's the initial surprise. But I want them to... I want it to be good because it's good. Mm. I want them to go, actually, that was good. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, so it has to be good removed from the context of it being a freestyle yeah. so it has to be entertaining informative it has to be thrilling and that's what i work at and i th- i don't think there are many people who can do that well yeah because a lot of a lot, a lot of people um i mean not everybody but there's it's it's a, a very private thing isn't it freestyling Definitely. writing rhymes because it doesn't necessarily mean you build the same rapport as a comedian on stage do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I yeah. Think, I think what I've seen from your shows, and I'd love to see it live, is you you have this, like you say, this balance of all these things happening at once that's, that is that is packaged in a way that kind of, kind of rappers should be doing it anyway. They can learn, you can learn a lot from this shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think one thing that would be cool is to tour with uh, an artist who is doing music and like open for them. Uh, and it's something that we've looked into over here, like mm. my management have the connections and I have connections with touring producers, but it's hard to think of who you would do it with, right? Mm. Like if Tyler the Creator wasn't as big, he's who I'd want to tour with, right? He's now so big, yeah. but like he has that, he's a rapper who is also a comedian essentially, mm. like with all the stuff that he works on or used to work on with like his TV shows and things. Yeah. They were really funny and he clearly has a great sense of humor. And so you need to find... You know, you can't just put me on the road with, like, Travis Scott. No. Because the audience would be like, but yeah, but why are you here? 
Whereas if you go on the road, if you, I don't know, JPEG Mafia. Yeah, yeah. If I supported JPEG Mafia, I think the audience would get it. I think they'd be like, oh, okay. That's just a good point. Because, yeah, because he's crazy and weird yeah. and funny. Like, he's funny. Yeah. Death Grips, right? All that kind of weird rap, not rap. Punky, hybrid Yeah, movie. I think you could have, you know, you could have just a comedian opening, but a yeah. comedian who freestyled, people would appreciate that. Um, you know who I think you'd be, you know who I think you'd be dope alongside? I think someone like a a visual turntablist scratch DJ, somebody that's kind of established that can do arenas, because that there is a a um, yeah, it's quite a uh, it's a visual thing. It's an appreciative of technicality, like people like that stuff. So yeah, like a, you know, like the DMCs and those kind of scratchy mm-hmm. DJ things. Yeah, yeah, I think like someone like. Um, like Cuba. Yeah, yeah. You could go on before Cuba and... Great, let's call him. Let's <laughs> give Q, you know what to We're do. We're going to get RJD2 up next, so, yeah. you know, you better say yes or no. Oh, there you go. So, yeah, there. for real, for real. You know, just, I think there's a... There's a... Yeah, well, that's at least one level up from what... Like, you're low, below from what you're saying with JPEG Mafia. Yeah, I can see that too. And things like that. Uh, there, There is a lot of ath- athletical qualities to um, rapping. Do you think, like, if you were to go and support someone like, like who we mentioned, they would be in any way threatened because your technicality is so high? Oh, I, d- I doubt that because if it's your stomping ground, then it's your crowd, True. right? And the heart, I was with a comedian last night who I, I thought I'd met him before. And then I was like, oh, I'm sorry I said that we met before. I've seen you support mm-hmm. another act. Um, and I'd seen him open for a comedian downtown 2000 seat room. And I remember being super impressed that he walked on and no one knew who he was. And then 20 minutes later, they were like, applauding wildly. Like, he'd, like, killed it. Because you have to grab someone around. Like, and yeah, I've yeah. seen support acts die horrible deaths. Like, yeah. I remember seeing a comedian bring out his support act. He was like, he's, he's a friend and a comedian. And for 10 minutes, we were there being like, oh, this is awkward. Yeah, this yeah. is really bad. So... You don't want that neither. No. Here. That's um, the last thing. You... But I think your fans are always going to love you. Like, I went on at the Comedy Cellar couple of months back, I, I close out the shows there, which is great. Mm. It means I have to go on after big comics, like Michelle Wolf will get off stage, and then I walk on, and the audience are like, why is this guy here? We just had the famous person, we don't know who this guy is, right? And so I have to win the crowd round, do it, and then like end the show hard. Mm. I went on an afternoon show, and then they were like, right, that was going to be the end of the show, but we've got a drop in, ladies and gentlemen, Dave Chappelle. And so Chappelle walks on. And that was cool because most deaf slash Yasin Bey was in the audience watching that. So he'd seen me freestyle. Dave, like, when I came off stage, like, introduced him and shook my hand, which was so cool. Yeah. Um, and he goes on. And I was like, going on after the freestyle is hard. But when you're Dave Chappelle, he just walked on. The audience applauded for a minute. He lit a cigarette and did his set. It's not like he has to acknowledge it. Mm. Whereas sometimes a comedian comes on after me, which is... I'm very fortunate that I get to close a lot of shows because yeah. it's hard to follow. If a comedian does go on after me, usually they can... Comedians are good. They can handle it. They can just... They'll be like... They'll be like, ah, it's a bit annoying because I was going to do a freestyle rap or something like that. Mm. Um, but there is, I did support a comedian for four dates. It was meant to be a fuller tour and I did get pulled from the tour without a reason... And uh-huh. uh, when I asked for the reason, I was directed towards a review that had been put out of that comedian's show where it said that uh, he was upstaged by his support act, <gasps> who was the main highlight of the evening. No, uh, see. His show was really bad. <laughs> it was a Haters really lazy show. Hate, okay. And so wow. that was really funny. I was like, I got kicked to the tour. My agent's like, yeah, but that's a pretty cool reason. I was like, yeah, but I need money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'm gutted as well, you know. I mean, yeah, it's bittersweet, isn't it? So, yeah, I, I, I don't think, I don't think people would be threatened. No. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but, yeah. I'm just there to make sure everyone has a good time. Like that's it. I just want, yeah, I want an audience to be happy. I like the fact that you also you don't you don't ride too much slang into your freestyles. I I've noticed it's it's all very, um, it all orbits not only around the subject matter you've been thrown, but also I like your in rhymes. I love the fact that you. You know, there's no slang. It's to the facts. It's you're you're running off this one uh, thing that's been thrown at you, and you're you're kind of going back on yourself, and you're zigzagging around. I'm trying to make it. links. I'm trying to call back. I had the one I put up last week was super fun because I the first topic I start with I linked it back to solve a problem at the end of the rap, 
Um, Crazy. I, yeah. And also, I mean, I'm, I'm not speaking a way that I don't speak. Like, I'm, I'm very lucky I had a super, super good education. So it would feel disingenuous for me to start putting in vocabulary that is not natural for me. Yeah. Um, Just to conform and get... Exactly, yeah. Mind. Like, uh, it's... Because I think that's disingenuous. Yeah. Um, yeah. But also, I, I will use every word that is available to me because every word that you know is a possible rhyme and... I want to be able to... I also be aware that I should make my raps accessible to my audience. Like, if I'm in a, a club that's, like, predominantly younger crowd compared to my regular spot, which is, like, the crowd mm. there are skew older, mm. I I'm change it up a bit. Yeah. Especially, like, speed of beats um, type of styles. Like, I'm not going to come in with, like, a drill instrumental in a club that's, you know, people 35 and upwards. Yeah, yeah, true. I'd save that for a younger crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas, like, some boom bap or some West Coast, I might be doing that more at the kind of older club because yeah. I know what will get that crowd vibing. And a big part of that is beat. Like when I play the comedy cellar on the weekend, late night shows, like the one o'clock shows, they're really hard spots because people are fucked. They're yeah. so drunk. And, and they're comedy out. They're, they're, yeah, they are. Yeah. And so I, I have some beats that I will always use. Mm. Usually I change my beat every show if I can, because yeah. I want to record it, put it online and I don't want to use the same beat again. Yeah. But for gigs I have to smash, I have a certain go-to number of beats that I'm like, this is going to go off. Like, it's got explosions in, it's got bits which drop out. It's why I like performing with musicians and beatboxers rather than beats if I can because they know when to, like, let the beat stop and, like, emphasize the line. Yeah, and I bet there's a lot of play on that. As you were just talking then, you said beatboxing. I was like, oh, like, so many things you can do within that realm um, that gives you a home field advantage of, like, keeping people's interests mm -hmm. up. I like the idea of you using cannons and stuff in the background. Just oh yeah, wake up, pff, yeah, know, within the tune and. Oh yeah, well, like in my in my live show at the moment, I'm I have a sampler on stage so I can add air horns, explosions, all that kind of like fire in the booth sound effect yeah, stuff yeah, in it. the rap yeah. as I do. I'm like because sometimes the audience won't get a line that I've said, and in the past I used to stop in the middle of the rap and be like, guys, I don't know if you just heard what I said. That was incredible, and then go back in. Increasingly, I've stopped doing that because I'm like, ah, oh, doesn't matter. Like, people watch them online, they'll get it in that bit. But if that happens, I'll, like, I'll air hold myself on yeah, stage. It's, it, it, yeah, I think, and I think sometimes that is just a marker of, like, I know that this is all right. I just killed that thing. You mm -hmm. have to know, recognise yeah. that this was good. Um, yeah, and you, you just do. I just, I do believe you're killing it. And I do believe that this is just the beginning, beginning of your, your journey, man. Mm -hmm. It's actually nuts that we, you know, that you're just doing your thing. And, you know, for for cottage industries and people that are doing stuff in-house and self-employed, doing it their way, not having to rely on a scene, I think that's totally charming. And in America as well, to know that you're out there hustling, it's, it's inspiring, dude. It's fire. It's fire. So for those that you, that you don't know, this man right here is the future. <laughs> your future is straight white and middle class I hope you, I hope you like so, that but yeah, again again look we're, we're just you know we're just we're just giving it the, the Billy Big Spuds because there's a time and a place and now more than ever you know comedy is one of the fewest the last surviving say what you feel art forms not that I say anything that's of much importance you know my a joke I did the other night was about sundials. So I'm really hitting the hard topics, you know. Uh, yeah, but it's good. Sundials, it's good, what man. to deal with that? I like, I, like the, I like the blending of the two. I like the blending of the two. And like you said before, being great is what all that matters. Mm -hmm. Doesn't yeah. matter where you're from, it's where you're at. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I always just wanted to be... That's kind of a big thing about me synthesising comedy and rap, especially comedy and freestyle, is like, make your own niche and then be the best in that. Yeah. Find out what you're good at of a few things, combine them all together, and then no one can challenge you on that thing because telling you, you, it, you, telling you cheated, you. right? That's yeah. the thing. Like I'm like, oh no, I'm the best comedian who does freestyle rap. Yeah. If I was like, I'm the best comedian, best freestyle rap, people would be like, oh, shut up. I'm like, show me another person who does what I do yeah, it's, it's, and does it to the same level and then it makes it, it's, you know. Yeah, but also, you know, it's fun. also there's the, the character, the, like your face alone. You, it's almost <laughs> like, dude, not, not in a funny way. I mean, in a, in a remember them memorable way yeah like that some of the best comedians i know of whether it's you know alan carl or i don't know bob monkhouse i don't know whoever you 
just... I like that we name dropped Bob Monkhouse on this oh, podcast. That's so cool. OG. Oh, gee, for, like, I'm a big bum on one side. Um, Just in power, Bob. Yeah, hold tight, hold tight. <laughs> did you watch a documentary on him? I did not. No, I haven't right. been able to. I know people keep talking about how great Crazy it is. Crazy, bro. Um, but yeah, so, look, you know, it's it's a memorable face. It's a memorable... You, and you just remember these people for killing it. You know, Les Dawson with the mm, wonky piano. And, yeah. You know, all these sorts so of old school things that, you know... And it takes a face, it takes a character, it takes a punch, doesn't it? It's good shit, man. Good shit. I think we'll wrap it up there. We have to. Because yeah. I want to do a freestyle with you. Let's do it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much, Chris. Killed thank it. Thank you. It's um, been a pleasure. Fun, huh? Um, Kill Together podcast live and direct, as we do every week for you, all right? Big shout out to Bandstream Media as well, inside the place, all right? Uh, stay lucky, people. Stay out of trouble. Peace. <laughs>